Hi, I'm Nina Deeb, and this is my husband, Sam Picano. Hello. Sam's going to be assisting me today. Uh, first of all, he is, uh, he's also Mr. Consumer with me, so Sam and I are going to be walking through, modeling through a purchase of a new home together. We're the, we're the buyers. And so this is new home construction, yes? Yes, Sam and I are buying a new, a brand new home together. That's the model that we are going to walk through. But not really. Not really, but we're going to just uh, show what it looks like for a consumer as far as income required and how much you have to put down and uh, just, to, just to show you the scenario of, the, um, of how, how numbers look for the and, consumer. And shine some light on some hidden costs as yes, well. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, let's get started. Alright, so we'll share the first screen. This is my study that I, that I have uh, done, my real-time study. This study is specific to uh, Warada region, so I did this study, the, I, the model here is if we were purchasing a home, I had to pick a city just to kind of uh, pick some, uh, choose some costs. So I chose, uh, I chose Cambridge, um, so the, the, everything that we see here are numbers that I've used for Cambridge, the so development charges and our uh, numbers and the, uh, the, uh, also the income uh, census numbers I've used are for Warada region. So, the um, average purchase price of a home in Waterloo Region has just surpassed a million dollars. So I chose a million dollars for the purchase price and just to make it nice and round for two reasons. Uh, it is the average uh, price that, the, uh, that we just uh, got to in December of just December. And also there's no default mortgage default insurance available. Um, once the purchase price is a million dollars. So at a million dollars, once it's over a million, we would have to put down more than 20% down on the house. So it's or it would already be $200,000. It changes things quite a bit. And um, under a million dollars, the way the down payment would work for us is the first 500,000 we would have to put at least 5% down, so that would be $25,000 on the first 500000 And on the next 500000 we would have to put 10% down, so that would be $50,000 on the next 500000 for a total down payment of 75000 That's how much we would have to put down on this million dollar house, Sam. Mm, wow, times are getting scary. So we'd have a mortgage of nine hundred and twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Once we put the seventy-five thousand dollars, our debt minimum down payment of so it's at seven and a half percent, we'd have a mortgage of nine hundred and twenty-five thousand. Okay. Okay. So then we would have um, the mortgage default insurance that gets added to the mortgage, which is thirty-seven thousand dollars. So four percent of 925,000, 4% of that is $37,000, and that gets added That gets added to our mortgage. So that gets added on top of the mortgage and actually goes through the, the, the payment plan? Yeah, it would be amortized. Wow. You, you can pay it, like you could pay that um, and not have it as, as a closing cost. But if you had 4% to put down, an extra 4%, if we have an extra 4% to put down, um, we might as well put it down and then meet the next threshold because it reduces. The amount that you uh, pay in that percentage reduces with every 5%. And then at 20%, we wouldn't, like if we, if you and I wanted to put $200,000 on this, we wouldn't have to pay that fee. If we put, mm. if we had $200,000 to put down, we wouldn't have to pay that mortgage default insurance fee, but we don't. That's so, a lot of cake. Yeah, that's right. So this thirty-seven thousand is four percent of the total mortgage amount. The bare minimum. Yeah. This is the bare minimum down payments is what you're getting at here. Yes, this is bare minimum down payment. That's the minimum that we could uh, get away with putting down is seventy-five thousand, and then we would have to pay this mortgage default insurance of four percent of the remainder of that mortgage. Which is thirty-seven thousand dollars. Right. And this is just an insurance that goes right on top of the purchase price. Yeah. So this this is uh, it protects the bank against us not making the mortgage payments. This doesn't. Um, mm, interesting. 
Yeah, so the bank would not lose any, um, any, any. They had, they wouldn't have any loss because the default insurance here is, uh, it's paid by. It would be paid by us, the consumers. So there's also, it doesn't end there actually, there's PST on this insurance as well. And if you look a little further down in the in addition to purchase price, just below that, you've got that 8% um, mortgage default insurance uh, tax there. So that's another almost $3,000 that we have to pay. That's so, tax on the insurance? Yeah, yeah, you and I have to pay this $2,960. Um, the the tax on the default insurance that gets that's going to be added to our mortgage, we'd have to pay this three thousand dollars on closing. Holy cow! Yeah, so that would give us uh, so if it up back up to the top there this nine hundred and twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's after our down payments applied nine twenty five, and then the mortgage default insurance of four percent gets applied. That's thirty seven thousand. And that gives us a mortgage of nine hundred and sixty-two thousand. So, we started at a million dollars. We put down seventy-five thousand, which took it down to nine twenty-five. And now this 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 mortgage default four percent of the thirties. That's you have to pay that. You have no choice without twenty percent down. Right. If you if you had twenty percent, you wouldn't have to pay that. Or if you had a first and second mortgage, like if you had somebody willing that did a second mortgage to bring you up to a twenty percent loan to value, uh, then you wouldn't have to pay that CMH, that um, mortgage default insurance fee. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So our mortgage that I've worked out. So I worked out the mortgage for us. Our mortgage is going to be based on nine hundred and sixty-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay. I'm glad this is only figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> well, but this is real life, though. This is the real life um, pricing. So if you scroll down. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Oh, one more quick question. Sure, Sorry. Sure. So is um, how does the down payment work with all that on on us? Uh, if you don't buy, if you're buying a, a second home, like if you're moving into a house that's already pre-built. It would still be that it's the exact same. It's the million dollars, the seventy-five thousand down, and the um, the so the the first part here, the first part of my formula would be the exact same for a resale home as well, right down to the your mortgage would be nine hundred sixty-two thousand. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. So um, if we we're going to move down to the mortgage uh, breakdown, so uh, it within. Um, if we go down a little bit further to where it has the down payment, closing costs, and payments, I want to walk through this here to show to show how this uh, mortgage payment works out. So the down payment, closing costs are uh, they work out to be, and I'll go up and break this down in a second for us so that you know what we're paying for. So we're gonna have a hundred and five thousand and six hundred and eighty-three dollars that we would have to come up um, with to buy this house. So you and I need to have savings of $105,683 to buy this house. Mm -hmm. So looking at this house, I worked at a few different things. Uh, the mortgage, that $962,000, our original mortgage that we have after our down payment and the default insurance is added, that mortgage at a 25-year mortgage, a 25-year amortization rate and 2% interest, it's the monthly mortgage for us is going to be four thousand and seventy three dollars and sixty cents. Holy cow, a thousand dollars a week on average. That's principal and interest only. Okay. Oh well, wow. Well. So then the other number that I worked out, I worked out what the property taxes would be because you don't know when you're buying a new home what your property taxes are really going to be. So the formula that I use for property taxes, which is part of the reason I need to pick a city. Um, I use the City of Cambridge's tax rate for um, their RT tax rate for a uh, residential and I multiplied that by the net uh, price of the house so that I have it worked out here in my notes actually it was um, I multiplied that by the tax rate and it gave me these property taxes so the property tax is 10000 Three hundred eighty-six dollars and thirty-seven cents. I've modeled that on by taking the um, the net price of the home, 
and the um, mill rate for uh, tax mill rate for Cambridge. That's what gave me that number. Okay. So between that, so for our mortgage, for our mortgage that we're going to have, our property taxes, and our heat, uh, those will come out to five thousand and eighty-nine dollars a month. So that takes into account one hundred and fifty dollars for heat. Taxes are eight hundred and sixty-five a month, and the mortgage is four thousand and seventy-three sixty a month. That's how much we would have to pay. Wow. Five thousand a month, just a, and this is the average home. This is the average home in right. the Waterloo region now. Right, that's right. So Sam, uh, so this five thousand and eighty nine. Why it's important to have this number worked out is this is called this is the number that they're going to work out. Uh, this is the number that our finance is going to be worked out on for our GDS and TDS ratios for how we qualify to to figure out whether we can qualify for this home. Okay. Okay. So if you look at um, what that payment is, the gross debt service ratio, the monthly income required to carry a, the mortgage, so your monthly um, mortgage, property taxes, and heat of the $5,089. So that can be 32% of our gross income, our combined gross income, both of us. Okay. So. Um, that we would have to have income between you and I. The two of us have to have income of fifteen thousand nine hundred and five dollars. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so the gross annual income between us required for both the TDS and the GDS ratio. I'll explain that in a second. So the gross annual income required for both of us, we would need to make. A combined one hundred and ninety thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars to qualify to buy this home um, at, at this at what these um, payments are. So um, after so the reason the TDS and the GDS are the same, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Um, what I did is I worked the formula out to be just that the TDS works out to be exactly what it needs to be. And it's, uh, if we look here, it's 1,200, and um, I do have it in my notes, $1,272.40 a month times 12. So that would equal our monthly payments in addition to the, um, the, the mortgage the, and the heat and taxes. So any other uh, payments you have, whether we have car loans, student loans, uh, credit cards, those payments can be $1,272.40 a month for the formula to work for us and then we would still, that's the income we need, you and I need to have an income, gross income of $190,860. Wow. You good? Uh, yeah, I guess. Alright. <clears throat> so that gives us our GDS at the, at this, uh, with these figures, our gross debt service ratio is 32% and our total debt, total debt service ratio is at 40% of our gross income. Okay. Okay. So Sam, if you scroll down a little bit to my next, what I did here is uh, I did income modeling um, to, to show uh, because the formula uses our gross income. We don't get paid in gross income though, do we? We get paid in net income. Right. Right. Government wants their piece. So it's kind of like the convertible peso and the peso in Cuba. Like we we actually get paid in we don't get paid in gross dollars. We get paid in net dollars. So for you and I, we care about how much money do we have after our taxes to pay our bills, right? Mm -hmm. To make sure that we can afford them. So I took the um, what I did for income modeling is I used I gave the credit to WealthSimple.com. I used their site to figure this out. Um, so I took. A single employed person, two um, single employed people, and I, I broke it down so that you have different combinations, whether you're a single person or like us, like a couple, to break down of what, what it looks like and what your net income is so that you can really, we can work out how much money we really have left at the end of our, uh, at the end of our day to pay the rest of our bills, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's because we have set bills on guarantee we definitely have to have water oh, absolutely I mean, 
We have to have a roof. Well, for, for sure. For this. So um, if you look here, so we are self-employed. So if you look at the self-employed numbers, so we are two self-employed people. So the uh, second last uh, shell, one there, the one ninety-eight sixty. I just broke our income up as if it was, you know, evenly. It's just easier that way. I want to keep this simple. So Sam, you and I pay on our income of a hundred, our self-employed income of this hundred and ninety thousand eight sixty that we need to make for this house. We are paying um, fifty four thousand six hundred ninety eight in total taxes, and we have left in net income a hundred and thirty eight thousand two hundred and forty dollars and fifty cents. That's what our um, net income is. Okay. Um, self-employed income. Okay. Okay. So what I did for income modeling is I took the um, I took the incomes along the way of the different models, and then I divided it by the five different scenarios to give me an income modeling number of the hundred and thirty-two thousand two hundred and forty cents. So that's my income modeling net um, income uh, figure that I use because that's roughly what people would clear to be needing to qualify for this house. Because mm -hmm. that's, uh, so from there is this 132.2. If you scroll up, and what I'm going to do with this number, um, so I took that um, number and I took the amount of um, payments that we have, so the GDS and um, the TDS ratio. I took that, uh, if you scroll down please, I took the uh, GDS um, and TDS ratios, and then I divided that by, so it is, uh, I can't find it here. Yes. And we're back. Okay, so if, you, if we look at, um, if we work out the number as to the net income rather than the gross income, um, if we take our property, um, the principal, interest, taxes, heat, and the, our other expenses, when we take those numbers and if we use the income modeling number of the 132200 because that's how much money we really have to pay our bills with, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're in around 50% of our, it's about 50% of our net income is going to um, these payments. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I took the total debt service um, ratio and I added insurance to it because insurance is a condition of your mortgage. I put fifteen hundred dollars, which is less than what we pay now, but I was just to use a, try and use an average number. I thought I'll just put that in. So fifteen hundred dollars for um, our insurance. When I add that in. It really gives us a, a, I call it a TDSI, a total debt service ratio adding the insurance since it's a part of the mortgage requirement. It gives us $77,836.80 a month. Uh, sorry, a year, <laughs> a month. <laughs> We're gonna have to work a lot more. Okay, yeah, I'll see you, I'll see you next January maybe. <clears throat> Prices are not that high. Um, be all different next high, January. So, <laughs> So from there, the next thing that I took into account that isn't in the, uh, not in the formula, I call it not in formula. This is my NIF, so this is a, a, an acronym I've come up with, NIF. So NIF is total utilities, transportation, medical, groceries, uh, forced improvements. So forced, you know, like when your roof goes, you have to fix it. When you're furnace goes, you have to fix it, your plumbing, any of these things go, you really don't have a choice. These are, you, you have to fix these things. So um, what I did, Sam, um, to form part of this study is I took our own uh, numbers on what it costs to run our house, uh, and I used that for modeling. So if you scroll down, down for this one. it's going to be okay, it's okay. Uh, so what I did is, uh, there it is, NIF, not included in a formula. <clears throat> I've included our utilities. So this is our internet, our phone, our water, our sewer, um, hot water tank, rental. Uh, 
water softener, uh, what else do we have? Everything. All our utilities came out to almost $11,000 a year. So that's something that we have to have. And then the next thing that we, that are for our bills, so our cars, we have two vehicles. So our cars are running us, our car gas maintenance transportation is running us $17,435 a year. Okay. This is, this doesn't take into account car payments. We don't, we don't have car payments, so we didn't take into account any car payments. This is what it cost us to run our two vehicles, 17000 fuel and repairs. Yeah, fuel and repairs, stickers, like just things like that. Licensing, okay. And then capital repairs, so that's um, things like when our eaves troughs fell off, we had to put them, well, we. Second time. We had to, did I have to put those eaves trough back? No. Yeah. Second time they fell off. So you have to do those things, we don't have a choice. What was mm -hmm. the other thing, was it the hot water? There's something else happened, but there's, there's things that come up when you own a house, so that's where capital repairs are there. When your roof goes, it's a roof. When your furnace goes, it's a furnace. So these things are every year you, you can expect something. That's capital repairs. Okay. Okay, groceries. I, I just put in a thousand dollars a month. I know it's low. That's low, right? Yeah, I think a month. so, yeah. Medical. It's crazy. Groceries are crazy now. Medical and dental, so that's, that's actual. And I don't think that was all of it. I think there was more than that. Probably a family of four two visits a year, right? Yeah, that, that was, that's what I uh, have in our, in our Excel sheet, but I think it was more than that, but I put that in. So that's our medical and dental. And then life insurance, so the life insurance that we have. So the total of not included in the formula, the NIF, is $50,000 a year. That's without car payments. Without car payments, you and I pay 50000 a year. So what I did is I took this 50,000 a year. So if we scroll back up, so I call that NIF because it's their true costs. So it, then we have this 70, the 77,836 divided by the 132.2. So the total, uh, total debt service ratio and insurance together. Divide that by my income modeling um, formula. I made a lot of these formulas up, but it, they're important. I think it's important to keep an eye on the ball here. So it's uh, it gives us a net income. So you and I are going to be spending of our net income at that point. We're already spending fifty eight point nine percent of what we clear on those on those four things. Mm -hmm. So when we put in, so now you and I just figured out that our other expenses are fifty thousand dollars, right? That we have mm -hmm. to pay, we have to eat. <laughs> Right. So, and I, uh, it's well, uh, more than me. <laughs> I love food. Um, so we add the NIF, so the fifty thousand dollars that we add. Um, it. I also didn't have anything there at all for clothing, savings, tuition. There's nothing in there at all for any mm -hmm. leisure. There's no money there for entertainment or leisure at all in my N NIF formula. So $50,000, when we add that, so now we have what I call a TAR. Um, this is my TAR ratio, so total actual ratio. So we are adding the TDSI, the NIF, and we're subtracting the heat value. The heat value was added earlier as $150 a month, which is not even close. So we're taking that heat value back out to give us a more accurate formula. So this gives us 77,836.80 plus 50,000 for NIF minus the 1,800. So our TAR ratio, what you and I have, our life is costing us. To buy this house, it's going to cost us $126,036.80. Per year. But there's no clothing yet. From our that's from our net pay of a hundred and thirty something. Yes, the income uh, my income model that I had there, so it's a hundred and thirty two thousand two hundred. So from that from what we clear, from what you and I would clear in, in an average scenario, 
So from that 132,240, our tar uh, is 126,036 and 80 cents. So once we have paid these bills, so our IM minus our um, total, uh, to, I should say tar actually, our tar, our IM minus our tar is our remaining income. We would have $6,163.60 remaining. So that it would uh, take up the tar is the taken up. The clothes and tuition and vacation. Well, we have two kids, so um, tuition for our two children. That's definitely not going to cover our tuition for our kids if we want to buy this house. Mm. So we can't afford this house. I don't. Th well, what do you think? It's going to take up. So well, it's going to take up ninety-five point three four percent of our income. I think the point here is that you're trying to get to the bottom of the affordable housing. But we can't afford this house, can we? Well, this is it. Right. This is not affordable housing, and this is the average median income of a home in the Waterloo region now. So I want to go back and go over a few of these bills to see um, how, uh, like, how things have um, gone up and, and where things have uh, gone up so much. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to look at is the down payment and closing costs to enter the market. So the 105683 like what I told you earlier, how much we need to come up with, mm -hmm. that's only because $37,000 was moved over to our mortgage. Because otherwise, our totals, that 105000 is really another $37,000 on top of that. The only part we really felt is the 2960 the tax on it that was added, showed up at our, is going to show up at our, uh, legal, our lawyer, on our lawyer's bill. That's going to be a closing cost that we're going to have to pay the two thousand nine hundred and sixty, but the thirty-seven thousand that got added, added to our mortgage, and again, like which means you're paying interest over an amortization period. That's right. That's right, Sam. So that four thousand, and so the mortgage payment that you're making every month. I took that thirty-seven thousand, and I took the um, two thousand nine hundred and sixty. So the bill that we get because of the. The, the bank bill that we get um, for the mortgage default insurance. I took that and I looked at the amortization schedule to see at what point do we get back to even. Like at what point do we get back to where you and I were on day one. We had a Which mortgage. Which is that 925. Right. So the 925, looking at the amortization schedule, you get to payment 16 by the time you get back to so it's actually not 925. I went to 922 because I also want my tax. Um, I was also looking at the 8% tax that we paid on closing. So I went to 922 on the amortization schedule. It took me to payment 16. So that meant that it cost us approximately $65,000 to have this um, mortgage default insurance because of the uh, it being amortized and being added to our mortgage. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember when we bought our first house? Yeah, in Cambridge, yeah. Do you remember how much we put down on it? We didn't want to, we were looking to avoid the um, having to pay this fee, right? The mortgage default fee. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I th yeah it was around 40 grand, I think, put on that. We, we paid 40,000, yeah, around $40,000 was our down payment on that house. That was, was that 2002? Yeah, mine yeah, came through the RSP program they had on at the bank, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so forty thousand dollars roughly then what we paid for our down payment to avoid the mortgage default insurance in 2002 was around forty thousand and yeah. the, and the default insurance now by the time you add that and that uh, and that tax to it is holy cow eh? it's forty thousand so, so, it's now, so now our down payment on our first house is really only just an added tax to a new home sale yeah Holy cow. Yeah, well, when, you, when you look at the two next to each other like that, when you remember our first home. I guess you're never going to get to the bottom of a housing crisis uh, with things like this going on. It was only 2002. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah, wow. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Sam, do you remember when um, remember when your parents bought their first house? They always tell us. Would they tell us how much did they pay for their first? Well, they were still in their first house. They're in Cambridge. Yeah, only ever had the one. Uh, 18000 they told me they spent. They've told us so many times it was eighteen thousand dollars. They bought, they built this house for, and how much was it? Uh, in nineteen seventy, in April, they they paid twenty two thousand six hundred and ninety five dollars. Yeah, 
So uh, based on that, that was a land transfer tax on that house. So 1970 land transfer tax was 0 0.02 of a percent. So 0 0.02 of a percent on 22695 was... Uh, $45.39 in land transfer tax. That was the land transfer tax. Well, what is it now on this one, this million dollar home now? So the land transfer tax on this house that you and I want to buy? Mm -hmm. The land transfer, it's $14,119. Holy cow. So, so that was 1970. Oh, since actually I worked it out. So since 1970, land transfer taxes went up. I think it was 3,100 percent. 3,100. It is. It's in here though. I did work it out in my study. So that was one thing worked that. Worked out in your inflation rates. <laughs> <laughs> so land transfer tax is gone up since your parents bought their house that they're still in. It's gone up. Uh, I'm not going to find it in here, but it's all right. It's in my study. The number. It's over. It's over 30 something percent. At uh, thirty-one thousand percent, the other thing is, uh, if you look at the mortgage default insurance, so this the thirty-seven thousand. Mm -hmm. That was uh, that amount has gone up because I had uh, my first home that I bought was in nineteen ninety-six, mm -hmm. and I paid uh, the maximum you paid at that time was two and a half percent, so you put five percent down on your house, and you would pay. Two and a half percent of your mortgage was your mortgage default insurance. I think I paid it was around thirty five hundred dollars. I have the file here. I think it was thirty five hundred dollars I paid for that default insurance then um, when I didn't have um, the twenty five percent to put down. So from nineteen ninety six till now, so thirty five hundred dollars for mortgage default insurance in nineteen ninety six. That was a single detached house in Cambridge. Now it's thirty seven thousand plus that tax. So now it's forty thousand. And it was three thousand something in nineteen ninety six. Wow. And the other thing that I've noticed too, if you look here, <clears throat> included in the price. So the reason I wanted to use a new home for modeling. So included in the new price, we have. First of all, we have the lot. When the lot, we have to look at the lot value. I put a lot value on a new home of three hundred thousand. And the lots are getting smaller. So this lot uh, will have a 5% parklands fee on it. It's a tax. This parklands fee is a tax. So 5% you eat, so the developer either has to donate 5% of the land to parks or has to pay this 5% parklands fee. So I've included this in the included in price. So the lot, well, I'm going to say it's 300000 That's okay. how much the lot's worth. Mm -hmm. So that's a part of the, I've, I've broken up three different ways of what's really in the house price. So the lot, 300000 So the parklands tax is 15000 Say five. It's 5% 5 of the lot value. And then we have development charges. So the development charges, so the City of Cambridge development charges are $54,423 on a single detached house. And that's in the price. That's in the price of the new home. So built into the price, included in that price, we have the parklands fee, development charges fee, and we also have HST. Wow, eh? $117,000 worth. Yes. $118,000 mm -hmm. worth. So HST was introduced in 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, so the HST does have rebates available on it at certain levels. I didn't use any rebates. I, I just used straight numbers. And I look at, like, the rebates on the HST can be clawed back. And, um, and that was the main reason that I said, well, I'm just going to take the HST straight through. Same with land transfer tax, like the land transfer tax, the $14,119 we have to pay. Like if we were first time home buyers and if you're there, like there's, there's, I didn't bother. It's just the land transfer tax is this. It's not if this, then this. This is, a, this is a study and I didn't want to use any like benefits for special groups if you're this and if you're this. It just is. There's no deductions. There's no mm -hmm. rebates on anything. It's just straight up. Mm -hmm. So if we take the, um, 
So I took the uh, in addition to, my in addition to prices, if, you, if we scroll down here, that's in my three notes. So in addition to the price, the price is a million dollars. In addition to that price, we have the mortgage default insurance. That's not, in, it's in, added to the mortgage, but it's not included in the price. Mm -hmm. So there's 37,000. In addition to, we have the tax on this default insurance of the 2,960 that we have to pay. So it's 40 grand. And then we also pay land transfer tax. We would definitely, like your words, not first time so home buyers, we have to pay that anyway. 14,119 in land transfer tax. So 54,000. I took the number like before the HST to give us a more accurate land transfer tax. So I actually didn't work it on a million. I worked it out on the net. Um, and then the, so HST on services. So this HST on services around $5,200. I worked that out on um, $40,000 worth of services and goods, like things like your appliances, um, things like your um, appraisers, legal fees, like w whatever you're going to have. I did not use any commissions for that. And the reason is, is a lot of homes aren't really being sold by agents anymore. They're being sold online through a registration system, right? The newer ones, yeah. So sometimes there is an agent, um, a list, sometimes there is a listing agent, but you don't, we don't really know. I don't know if they're paying any commissions or not. I didn't put commissions in here um, because it, I don't have no reason to believe that there is any. I don't really know. Uh, but I do know that you're going to need appliances, you need a water soft, you're going to need all these things, and there's going to be HST on all those things, which is true cost. So I put, I put that in the addition to. Then we have the um, Tarion, used to be called a, um, that used to be called the Tarion New Home Warranty. Uh, it's, the name has changed. There was an auditor's, um, Ontario auditor's report that was done in 2019, and uh, they changed their name after that. That was one of the things that the auditors uh, pointed out, the Ontario auditor pointed out, is that they uh, shouldn't have warranty in their name. Uh, so that's been changed to Tarion now. So 1,540, and also we have the um, uh, we have the HCRA, which is new, and that is a uh, also a um, response to the Tarion um, auditor's report from 2019. So they've created um, another uh, delegated authority. And uh, which gives more bills to us. You and I are going to have more bills to pay now with this new delegated authority. So we're paying the Tarion fee, you and I, Sam. We have to pay the uh, builder's Tarion fee, this 1540 And we also have to pay to Tarion. Tarion is collecting for HCRA, so she will be collecting $145 for HCRA, which was um, created to offset um, things that Terry and should have been uh, doing, I guess. And then we have the HST on these fees. So 1540, 1540, 145, and 219. These are all closing costs that we have to pay. That's almost $2,000, right? And it's mandatory. Yeah, yeah, you have to pay these. It's going to be on every bill of every new home. But it's all buried in the price. Yeah, you oh, this is in, dish, in addition to it. This is all in addition to, yeah, it's, oh, not, it's not in the price, it's in addition to. And then we have to have, um, so our legals, title insurance, disbursements, so about $5,000. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in these new homes you find like the city, the tree plant, and you this, find like a fee for this and a fee for that. This would be like a closing cost type thing? Yep, okay. yep. These are all. Uh, these are all in addition to. All these fees are in addition to. Uh, the only thing is the mortgage default insurance gets deflected over to your mortgage, and then so we have a total of our closing costs for this house are sixty-seven thousand six hundred eighty-three dollars. <laughs> uh, but because the thirty-seven thousand dollars is put on our mortgage, and that's with the minimum down payment of seventy-five thousand. Well, the seventy-five thousand is in addition to this, so well, yes. that's right. That's right. right. Going so, to in order for us to buy this house, we have to have seventy-five thousand to put down on a down payment. And the day that we walk into the lawyer to sign the papers to take possession of this house, we have to give them a check for sixty-seven thousand dollars. It won't work out that way, but it's like the the closing co that in addition to because it's your 
your um we'll have paid like some checks along the way, we'll have made a deposit, it's different deposits right. along the way that and we'll also, reduce well, this. Yeah, well the, the the mortgage default insurance is also in the mortgage, so you're not paying that up front either, right? That's right. It gets added just the paying it monthly for sixteen months to get you back yeah. to flush. Your first sixteen months of payments, so your four thousand and seventy three dollars and sixty cents that you're paying for sixteen months is to take you back to the um, back to your flush original starting point. Back to before the um, default insurance. Wow. So that's the uh, so sixty seven thousand. So our total there the, is sixty seven thousand six hundred eighty three. But it's reduced, and we would have to pay thirty thousand six eighty three of that, roughly on closing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's roughly about that. So um, I used uh, so when I have the down payment closing cost payments, I used two scenarios. I used a scenario of the reduced fee of the hundred and five six eighty three, and I also used uh, the true figure of what the down payment, which adds that thirty seven thousand back in. And then I wanted to see how long it would take for us to save for this house. So, so for you and I to, so, so our income combined, you and I make 190,860. So we have the income to qualify. So we make 190,860. Mm -hmm. And then our down payment and closing costs, um, it, we would have to come up with uh, 105,683 on um, in closing costs and down payment. Write a check. <laughs> so, so 105,000 entry. This is our entry right. cost on a minimum down payment. So I wanted to look and see how long we had to save. So you've actually got it at the right spot there. So I have 105,683 required to enter the market. So if you and I are really good savers, and if we can save 10% of our gross income, so nineteen thousand and eighty six dollars a year. What do you think? Can we do that? No, I don't think so. It would take us five and a half years. It would take us five and a half years to and enter the market at the minimum. So so we start saving now in five years these houses are probably worth double. But this because is what it, five years ago these houses were worth half. Yeah. Right. Well, if we were to save, if that's too hard, like if you think that's too much for us to save, then if we were to save five percent of our income of 190860 If we were to save 9543 a year, it would take us 11 years to save 105683 Wow. So if we added the uh, mortgage default insurance, which is really a closing cost, if we added that to um, our closing cost, which would give us 142683 so 10%, if we were saving 10% of our income again, 19086 it would take us seven years to save 142683 mm -hmm. But even at the $190,000, like, like with all your breakdown, I mean, there, there's, no, there's no room in there for like a vacation. No, there's no vacation. Or, tu or tuition. All we're trying to do is get a nest. Or like, like that's even, like that's just like basic groceries. Even. All we're trying to do is build a nest to have mm -hmm. our family. Right. <laughs> So uh, five percent savings at five percent savings, uh, the one hundred and forty-two thousand six hundred eighty-three would take fifteen years to save. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's my calculation there. So the net price of eight hundred and eighty-two thousand one hundred ninety-four. I took that and multiplied it by the Cambridge uh, tax rate. I've got the tax rate there. That's how I came up with the. Um, that's where I got the ta the uh, property tax rate. Um, and the next thing I wanted to look at, so once we add, um, once we add in 37000 to our true costs, that's there. Um, what I wanted to look at, Sam, is I wanted to look at what the incomes are like. So this is great, good for us. So yippee, yeah, yay, Nina and Sam can buy this house if we want to. I don't think we can afford it. Uh, like, I don't see how we could afford this and educate our kids too. I think we have to stay put. But um, having said that, so if we were to um, look at, do you think incomes in the Waterloo region are 190860 Combined? Like, like a household income? Well, it's think, really supposed to be just you and I. It's only you and I qualifying. I don't think so. Like, it, the household isn't a good uh, measure. I don't hear that. <laughs> 
So I guess when I look at that, then I think, what is it? I was tr I was looking to see what the household, what the not household incomes. Household incomes are very, uh, they're not appropriate to be measuring, um, to be measuring affordability, housing affordability, because a household income would include like your pension parents that might be with you, and there's lots of pension parents living with, um, li living with the family. And the other thing is it would include our teenage kids if they have jobs. It would include, um, like if you have a border, it would include your border's income under a household, I would think. So I don't think it's a very good measure. Um, now I did go looking and I did find the region of Waterloo, some uh, their resources, their census for 2016, we can pull that up. Okay, that was not, you had a tab for that, yeah? Yes. There it is right there, census income. So when I went looking to see what are our incomes here, because I'm looking at our housing here and I want to know what our incomes here are. I'm not interested in all of Canada, I'm just interested in us. What I found is, uh, I found the on the Waterloo Region site, that's where I got this from. So it has here for median total income of households, so between 2005 and 2015, it has only gone up, 10 years, it's only gone up, you ready? 1.6%. 1.6%, that's, like, that's not even the rate of inflation. That's nowhere near the rate of inflation for one year. <laughs> so, yeah, the water, well, look at Waterloo, Waterloo went down 1.6%. So what I did, uh, I wanted to keep it real for our for Waterloo Region. So I took this information from the Waterloo Region's site on the, and I didn't know how to take out, uh, I don't think household incomes are appropriate for measuring housing affordability. You know, we don't turn grandma upside down, get our pension out of her to pay our mortgage with. Um, so it's a base, uh, so this is, I've actually, it's high. This is higher, I'm thinking, than what it would even be because it is counting household income. It's counting your teenager's income. It's counting your, whoever's your brother that happens to be living with you. Um, it's counting his income. So we have in 2015, 77,530. I took the previous 10 years of growth of this 1.6%. Divided by 10 to give me a growth rate of 0.16 of a percent, and I applied that. So I have a um, I have a formula for what our um, housing, what our incomes are in the Waterloo Region. Um, so I have uh, if we go back. So based on this, this is where I, I just want to show you where I got the information from for trying to keep it real and trying to keep it relative to Waterloo Region. 1.6% household incomes in 2015 were 77,530. Can we go back to the um, to our uh, to my study? Mm -hmm. So we take that. I increased it year after year, and I have it in my notes here. I increased it up to 2021, and at 2021, so PI my projected incomes for 2021 um, for Roger Region is uh, we are at 78,277 um, for incomes. Um, so with 5% down, I worked this, this income formula to see what can, what can we afford with what our incomes are, with what our region incomes. So I took the 78,277 and I took 5% down because at that, at that um, at that price point, you're under half a million dollars, so 5% down is, is okay. And then uh, the heat I used is what this standardly used, $150 a month for heat. I used $300 a month for taxes, and I used $500 a month for other payments, whether it's a car payment, tuition. So with my projected income, the, uh, the qualif that would qualify uh, for a maximum purchase price of $390,000. The mortgage payments would be $1,631.64 a month. Again, that's 2%, 25-year mortgage. I've kept it uh, uniform. So that's the mortgage payment. The gross debt service ratio, which uses your gross income, 
31.91%, so just under the 32% threshold it can go to. The total debt service ratio is 39.58%, again, just under the 40%. So based on this, so our um, family in Warder region with an income of 78,277 can qualify for a home of 390,000 maximum purchase price. So I took this 390 and I went looking to see what we uh, what it has been selling for 390. So if you go if we go to the next screen and I will um, show you my search of um, of uh, what 390,000. So we can see here there has not been um, that property on concession was uh, it was a hydro station. It's not uh, not a house yet. Um, so if we look, so we have a. We we have like in Cambridge there was three homes that sold for four hundred thousand. Linwood there was a property for three eighty. So we can see here there really is nothing um, available in Cambridge Kitchener Waterloo for three hundred and ninety thousand. I went back, I went back one year. I did uh, in searching to see if there's anything available for our um, our income bracket of uh, in Waterloo region. There's nothing. So we'll go back to the other sheet again. And then, um, so based on that, so once we have uh, the lowest, so the single family homes in, uh, the single family homes sold in 2021, I then searched to see what homes had sold for. If there was anything, there were three homes that sold for 400,000. There were three homes that sold for 415000 This is in Waterloo Region, sorry. This is Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo. That's what I was searching. Uh, and there was uh, the lowest single detached home in this area that's currently listed is 450000 So that's another screen I'd like to share with you to show you what's available in a single detached home in Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo. So there you have it. The lowest price house is four forty nine nine. And then we have um, another four homes listed for four nine 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 in single detached homes. That's my search. So there is nothing available at that three hundred and ninety thousand maximum purchase price. Uh, there's condos available, but the uh, qualifying formula changes when it's a condo. And I think families uh, are probably if they're looking for a single detached house, that's what they're actually looking for. But it's it's not an option. It's not an option with what our incomes are. So we'll go back to my study. Um, so from, from here, what I wanted to, uh, I guess the points that I'm looking to make is uh, our, our market isn't in line with what the incomes are for our new region. It's scary. So it's terrifying. When I break it down of what is what price, so I've broken it down to the lot. The lot at 300000 that's what the lot is worth right now. Um, so the lot being 300000 that has gone up. I've been in business, I'm in my 26th year, and uh, smaller lots, so these are smaller lots, but we, the average lot has become a smaller lot. Smaller lots in 1996, unserviced, uh, were selling for between thirty and 35000 so I have it here in my study. Not service lot values have increased approximately 850% since 1996. That's my own observation. So comparable size lots sold in the range of 30 to 35,000. Um, and the other thing that has gone up quite a bit. So, I mean, we have the second largest la land mass in the world. A lot to be three hundred thousand dollars is uh, it shouldn't be three hundred thousand dollars that that has gone up. I mean, I've already I pointed out that in my own experience, a lot a building lot was thirty five thousand, and now a building lot is valued at three hundred thousand. So there's the first thing that uh, inflated um, out of control. Mm -hmm. So the the base itself, the base before you've put a house on it, the base has gone up eight hundred and what did I say? 850%? I forget my own numbers so much, I have so many of them. Um, so uh, that's gone up that much. Uh, the land transfer tax, what did I say? That went up 31,000%. Yeah, um, the uh, default insurance has uh, 
that's gone up. I worked that out as well from 1996 from my own experience. Um, so these are the uh, these are the uh, prices that have gone up so much. When I break it down to the three ways, so I've got my government imposed costs. If you look at the below your qualifying income there, Sam, I have uh, so there's the uh, government uh, up one, government imposed qualifying income. So there's your gross annual income required. So that was 190,000. The government imposed costs, and I've broken it down in my notes as well, are $354,951. The lot, 300,000. The remainder, 345,000. So the biggest portion is the government imposed costs. And um, that's, uh, so that's how I've, bro I've broken the, um, this down. It's broken three ways. So there's things that we need to work on. Um, we can't, we can't afford a million dollars. It's not houses. sustainable. Right? We can't even afford half that. Our kids are going to have such a hard time getting into the housing market. You know, what I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing people like they're happy about the values being up, but they're mm -hmm. also at the same time, they're saying they're scared, right? Mm -hmm. They say, I'm, I'm, exci like, I'm excited because I have a house, but then I'm nervous or scared because I have kids. And uh, it's, it's true, right? Like you, you're concerned about uh, thinking, so if the most our kids are making, is the seventy-eight thousand, or even say a hundred thousand a year? They still don't qualify at a hundred thousand a year. That's household income. So uh, based on that, they can't live here, right? Can't live in. Can't afford to live in the city they were born in. So we have to do something. We have to um, look for a way uh, to work around how the base price has moved to three hundred thousand, and also the in addition to prices. Mm -hmm. All these, in addition to prices, are uh, thresholds. They're qualifying thresholds, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or slash some of the government's cut. Yes, <laughs> yes. But <clears throat> well, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, we're we're trying to we're trying to just bring conversations here and bring awareness. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, I have some guests lined up. This podcast, like this, was actually Sam's idea. I've been <laughs> I've been writing a book for a very long time. Don't blame me. For a very long time, we've been writing a book, and he keeps uh, he kept saying to me, he says, you know what? He said, this is what you you should probably do is you should probably put some of the information out, um, and see if we if if I can't start doing something about this, the brain awareness, uh, so that uh, we have homes for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not sustainable currently. It's not sustainable, and um, I'm gonna quote somebody. I think. I think it's. I don't, I don't remember who I'm quoting, but I'll, I'll tell you who I think it is in a second. Of uh, There's no such thing as other people's children. There's only society's children, which I think is a terrible quote. And uh, because I don't believe in socialism, you only have your own kids. But it's uh, I look at this and I say, because I understand what's going on here, I'm going to take this terrible uh, quote, which I think was Hillary Clinton, of there's no such thing as other people's children, there's only society's children. Well, I guess I'll take her bad advice and I'll say I guess I feel like society's children like I feel like all the kids are my children now and um, I look and I say where are they where are they gonna live like if if uh, I, I don't see this 95% uh, of our incomes 95.34% of our incomes before we educate our young is uh, it's not sustainable so I look forward to your responses and I hope that um, I've put my study out. I'm hoping to get some feedback. I have nowhere to go with my studies. They're usually just for my own use. I just got, um, I added my work so that I can show you where I got my information from, my results. If you have any feedback for me, uh, my peers, if you have any things you can add um, or suggestions, I'm quite happy to make edits and changes and uh, make this look more accurate. Do you have anything yeah. else to add, Sam? Not really, but uh, even if they want to call in. Yes, if you want to call in, if you have something that you want to um, discuss, I'm, discuss uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be having conversations. Most of my information has come firsthand and through interviews. So because I've been in the business in my 26th year, 
we've bought and sold a few houses, we've gone through a few things, we keep our files, we keep our records, and um, we, I want to give our lived experience in addition to, I guess, society's mom can be a real estate agent, a real estate broker, so I wanted to break down for you where where the money where the money is and um, where we can do something and where the challenges are yes and, where the and, challenges and are nothing's going to change until the conversation is started that's true that's right? true so this i think this is the start of the conversation yeah it is right it was a hypothetical situation for you and i as if we were just some new first-time home buyers i really want to put us in the buyer's shoes because and it's not feasible for us as new home buyers it wouldn't be feasible for it's not feasible for us. We're, we're out of the market already. We were late bloomers, so our children are just teenagers now, but most of our peers, like their kids, they're yeah. young, they are young they're adults now. They're next stuff ready. And, and a lot of them say, like, Nina, like, I've got a good job, I'm a nurse, I'm a pipe fitter, I'm a machinist, I'm this, like, can I buy a house? Like, where am I supposed to buy a house? And it's like it's like a desperate desperation of you know I did everything right and I don't qualify for anything around here and uh, that's where that's where I started doing studies like this and also I want to, I want to know where do my clients come from I don't have clients that make this kind of money I don't have clients say listen I've got all kinds of new homes to sell you you know all I need is you to have an income of a hundred and ninety thousand dollars like mm -hmm. this isn't it, I don't think this is a reasonable income, and I don't think it's. I mm -hmm. don't think it's realistic. It's not. It's not. It's not unsustainable. Right. So thank you for joining us, and thank you to Sam uh, for all his help, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.